welcome to the Acid Trash Jamboree and to another edition of the Hallucinatory Horror Highlights mini-series. In this video we'll be taking a look at two films by arguably one of the most prolific creators of this kind of trippy, dreamlike cinema, the legendary Jess Franco. Firstly I'll be talking about Macumba Sexual from 1981 and then Mansion of the Living Dead from 1985. So without further ado let's check them out. In Macumba Sexual, a character named Alice and her unnamed husband, played by Lena Romay and Antonio Mayans, respectively. Uh, they're relaxing on vacation when Alice, who's an estate agent by trade, is called away suddenly to a remote island for a meeting with the mysterious Princess Obongo, played by Ajita Wilson. Princess Obongo is interested in purchasing a house in America, and despite cryptic warnings from Meme, the creepy, voyeuristic hotel receptionist, played by Franco himself, Alice goes off to meet her anyway at a strange seaside abode. Upon arrival, Alice realises that Princess Obongo bears a striking resemblance to Tara, a succubus-esque entity that's haunted her sleep for some years, uh, who either appears to her accompanied by two chained slaves or lying dead with a hideous creature covering her private parts. Tara and Obongo are, of course, one and the same. Bit by bit, Alice is drawn into her nightmarish realm, but to what end? And can her husband avoid meeting the same fate? Yeah, thanks to its deeply soporific, time-warping pacing, its throbbing, malevolent atmosphere, the frequent images of sweat-soaked naked bodies indulging in ritualised sex ceremonies and an avant-garde score from hell, uh, this is one of Jess Franco's most delirious concoctions. Plot-wise, it's not a million miles away from something like Vampiros Lesbos, Though overall, Macumba's sexual is more minimalistic and somehow even trippier than that earlier classic, and it's certainly a lot darker in tone. Fans of Lena Romay have plenty to feast their eyes on in this one. Uh, the blonde wig she wears uh, takes a few seconds to get used to, otherwise uh, it's business as usual with nothing left to the imagination. Okay, it's not the most eventful film ever made, uh, with no gore or special effects, but yeah, lovers of reality-bending, uncanny and erotic cinema will find much to enjoy anyway. On to Mansion of the Living Dead, and yeah, firstly I should point out that there's no actual mansion in this, but whatever. Yeah, this is partly uh, Jess Franco's homage to the Blind Dead series of films, and rather cheekily was even marketed as the fifth part of the series in some territories. Uh, though I also detect a pinch of The Shining in there too, uh, then the rest consists of his usual strange erotic goings on. So it begins with four girls arriving at a beachside hotel, ready for a fun-filled holiday away from their day jobs as strippers. The place seems utterly deserted though, apart from the sinister manager who insists that the hotel is actually fully booked, meaning the girls have to pair up and stay at opposite ends of the building. Not such a problem considering that both pairs are actually in secret relationships, so yeah, cue much sapphic friskiness. After this, they decide to chill out on the similarly unpopulated beach when an unseen assailant chucks a meat cleaver at them from one of the hotel balconies. Understandably freaked out by this, they head back to their rooms to comfort one another with more intimate bedroom fun. The next morning, one of the girls goes for a walk to clear her head and discovers a monastery which she duly explores. A disembodied voice commands to know what she's doing there. She screams and promptly vanishes. It later transpires that the monastery is home to an order of evil monks who, with the help of the hotel manager, offer up human sacrifices to their wicked lord. One by one, the girls end up at the monastery, but who will make it out alive? There's other stuff going on too, a dark secret locked away in one of the hotel rooms, amongst other things, but that's about the crux of it. Well, if you come at Mansion of the Living Dead expecting something as impressive as the good Blind Dead films, i.e. the first and the fourth ones if you ask me, then you'll be bitterly disappointed by this. If, however, you uh, take it for what it is, a meandering, dreamlike collage of sun, sea, spooks, sexy time and sadomasochism, all shot through with Franco's typically flat, 
eerie, liminal, twilight zone atmosphere, then you might get something out of it. I, for one, think it's pretty cool. Uh, it stuck in my head after I first watched it years ago, so I was looking forward to seeing it again. Okay, so it's slow as hell, the plot is all over the place, the erotic sequences aren't up to much, and the monks are just a bunch of guys in cheap skeleton masks, but somehow it all hangs together as something uniquely odd and unsettling. Again, I should point out that Lena Romay and Antonio Mayans co-star in this, Lena playing one of the vacationing strippers, and Antonio playing the hotel manager. So there we have it. As I said at the start, this is just the tip of the iceberg if we're talking about dreamlike or nightmarish films by Franco. Yeah, rest assured that this isn't the last time you'll be hearing his name mentioned in relation to this type of stuff. Anyway, I hope it's been of interest. Please hit subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on all future episodes in which I'll be talking about a whole host of offbeat movies and music. And I'll see you again soon on the Acid Trash Jamboree.